Oh, we're starting already. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, podcast episode number five. Whatever lah. Five. Five. <laughs> Five and fifty thousand. Oh, oh, we rich? Yeah, we rich. Oh, I didn't check. Yeah, <laughs> fifty thousand. I mean, by the time this goes up, it's fifty thousand. Uh. Now oh, it's haven't? like it's like three hundred away from it. Oh, okay, yeah. it will be that. Like, it will yeah. be there. So actually, last week I went and shot a special. Oh, uh, I haven't seen the video. Yeah, with, yeah, with a celebrity. <laughs> we did a tie up Okay. Something quite minor, but I managed to get her to sign a cap. A Volvo cap. Wow, nice. So if you win the contest, which is just like leave a comment, mm-hmm. you get a free cap with a wow, signature. Wow, nice. <laughs> yeah. Very uh, nice. But we How was the episode? Uh, you guys are talking about CRV? CRV, yeah. Like, why? <laughs> but we have to balance out the celebrity with something dark. <laughs> no, that's a, that CRV was my friend's one. Oh. I nearly bought it, except the price was too high. Oh. Uh, after I sold the It sub, was the first gen. It was the first gen. Mm. It was imported from the UK. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, only one or two owners, mm. and it was very mint. Nothing was modified, so it looked factory stock. You know all that. You know that, that Japanese kind of fabric, but of course UK spec uh, Okay. That kind of nice, uh, charmingness to it uh, But what was really nice was very mint, uh, resprayed, and manual gearbox. Oh which, wow! Which for a CRV of that period was very strange. And there's something about the CRV that is quite unique, uh, especially the first gen. Every subsequent generation just gets more and more plebeian. Plebeian, exactly. Yeah. It just becomes mm. the Civic or the Corolla, whatever. It's it's just, it, it, you know, at least Civic drives really well. Yeah, yeah. The, the CRV uh, even, just even normal Civic drives pretty good. Yeah, it's just like it's a bit normal. Yeah. Um, the CRV just gets like oh, uh, your yeah. me. Just becomes a family SUV. But ah. I, I understand why after driving this car, after being driven in this car, which one? The, the, CRV? the first gen oh. CRV. I realized it's too quirky. Like it has features that you don't need, like the sunroof mm. is a huge sunroof okay. for the rear passengers. Mm. You don't need that. Well, it, it's pretty standard on uh, on uh, luxury car these days. Yeah, a, a panel, for, exactly. panoramic sunroof for luxury cars. But this yeah. was like trying to be lifestyle. You know, you mm. SUV, you go in the woods, you want to see the. W- were they canopy. later to the game? Uh, from uh, Toyota. Uh, 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 no, Rav4 and CRV launched around the same time. They even had like a picnic table which we showcased in that yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like, I remember, it's yeah. the luggage rack. You know? yeah. So, you know, the, the Pack- solid... Packaging-wise, the CRV, the first gen was superior to the yeah, last yeah. one. But when, when, when I looked at the car, yeah. the boot is tiny, man. Oh, is it? I cannot substitute... By today's standard. By la. today's standard. Even though it's an SUV, yeah. uh, I can't substitute the Alza with the CRV. Mm, the boot mm. on the CRV is just too small. Mm. You know, you can't, you can't move around a family in that. Mm. Uh, and then no rear aircon with that glass roof, it gets hot. Mm. But I remember the packaging was so good because you can literally walk from the front to the back. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah? You can fold yeah? away the yeah? the center console. Honda uh, packaging like, Honda does this very well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you put the first gen Rav4 side by side with the CRV, the I would thing, say yeah. design wise, I would prefer the Rav4, especially yes. the two door. Especially it's gorgeous. The yeah. Give it a big wheel. It's like it's, it looks like a sneakers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. And right. get the one with the right engine. If I'm not mistaken, there is one with the three S engine. You f- look at the spec, right? Yeah. Is, don't get the J spec. Ah. Get the E or G spec? Well, whatever spec they had now, yeah. to be honest, the most important thing is the type of engine is that is in the, the car. Mm. Get the one with the... It's a, it's a 3S lah. Ah, uh, 3S engine. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's not going to be your VVT Li 3S ah, or whatever. No, no, no. Beams no, it's not, 3S. It's not a Beams 3S. Yeah. But, 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 but get the 3S one. Right. It makes a big difference because I drove two side by side. It, it is huge difference. Mm. So get a 3S one, that would be good. But technically speaking, it's just a normal car. But CRV in comparison is a better package product, isn't it? It, it is, yeah, yeah. In what? the first gen especially. Yeah, it it's was... a shame they don't have a two door. Yeah, that's the thing. Because it's a HRV, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know why people shun old cars nowadays. Because I've been driving some old cars recently. Especially, you know, I did my my uh, I did an inspection for my Celica that I sold off. Uh, the grey one. The grey one. Yeah. That I just delivered yesterday. I just handed over to the new owner yesterday. So the, the inspection was long, like, it took four hours and one hour because we're doing multiple inspection yeah. in one shot. So my 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 runner, which is VJ. Uh, <laughs> shout out to VJ. Yeah, shout, shout out to VJ. Oh wait, you should shout out Pute and Kelapa Oasis. And it's okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out also to Kelapa Oasis and uh, Pute uh, for, for sponsoring this video. 
Kelapa Oasis is a restaurant. Uh, yeah, they deal mostly in, in coconuts in USJ. In USJ. USJ 4. Ah, USJ 4. So check it out, mostly in coconuts. Yeah. Do, do they have proper meals? They have proper meals. They, got, okay. they used to do, I think they still do nasi lemak. Okay. They do a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Uh, you can go there, you can buy ingredients, and you right. can buy finished products, ah, milkshakes okay. and all that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, and Pute. And Pute, you can do your events here. It's a huge event space with uh, multiple halls concept. Uh, you have a big hall, meat hall, and then the small one, which is here. Yeah. yeah. And expanding to Sri Damansara. And Sri Damansara as well. Coming soon, coming soon. Yeah. Be cool. All right, so yeah, uh, Vijay, shout out to Vijay as well. He was, he was, he was <laughs> He's not a sponsor of this show. <laughs> he just this, uh, help us out. <laughs> he just helped me out with my inspection and, and stuff like that. Uh, all those difficult stuff. Lah. Um, so I, I let him do the difficult thing. And it was a four hour inspection. So he said, you know what? You take my car and then you go home and then. Uh, you drove his uh, Accord? No. Then? He, oh, I wish I drove uh, his Accord, man. man. That was, his, uh, oh, that was nice. else, man. his Accord was a Euro R. Wasn't Euro R. Hmm. But. Uh, no, he, 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 he was driving an X-Trail that day. It was the first generation X-Trail, facelifted. So that it, one came late. The, the X-Trail came later than the CRV and the... Oh, X-Trail, X-Trail was late to the game. Late, man. Yeah. They were like one generation yes. or one and a half generation late to the yes, game. Yes. Right? But um, X-Trail, he, he was giving me an X-Trail, the first gen, yeah. facelift. So it's a bit rounded with the lights, you know. Mm. First gen is hard. Corners and whatnot. Yeah. They, they tried to round out. The, that was an awkward period. I think that one produ- was produced in Indonesia. Oh, was it? Mm. Uh, anyway. Whatever said and done, yeah. it was a pretty nice car. Mm. Yeah, I was driving it around. I drove it home. I was like, "Hey, not bad, man." And spacious. You know? Spacious. It was spacious. It has a big car. Ergonomic. Feel. Ergonomic. I nearly bought the car. Ah. Then I found out the gearbox is a bit problematic. Ah, I wouldn't be surprised lah with Nissan and all. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but one thing: do not get the leather seat, man. Oh, better. You know the Nissan leather, oh, yeah. the Tanchong leather, not the Nissan leather. So find one in the market with a cloth seat. Mm. Solve all your problem. Yeah. The leather seat is horrible, man. I, I, it was and hot. then budget about 2k to fix the, <laughs> the automatic transmission. It could be, it could be. Yeah. But guess how much it was selling? 10? 11? 15. 15. So I'm like, dude, the car is perfectly running, mm. it's comfortable, it's big, it's... Oh, come on. It, it's, it's the price of my shit box. <laughs> I didn't want that, to call it shit <laughs> <laughs> It's the prices of my shit box that before I restore them. Mm. And know, it's comfortable, it's utilitarian. Comfortable. You can use it as a daily. And parts are cheap. Yeah. Is it? Uh, I mean, for Tanchong, parts okay. are, are quite cheap. Like, parts will break, yeah. but you can re- refurbish, yeah. you can you can swap parts out. Yeah. I, I honestly really was this close to buying a first gen X. Yeah. Uh, I mean, granted, it didn't look that great. It didn't look that great, but you know, if you want maximum utility for about 10 15k, Dude, there you go. Makes so much sense. Then, so then I got I, I got advised <laughs> about the transmission failures. La. But it's 2,000 ringgit. It's okay, la, but like, you know, it's cash. La. For Still, someone like me. Uh, <laughs> you consider it 12,000 ringgit purchase. <laughs> <laughs> you budget it into your. Yeah, you budget okay. it into your, your whatever. I suppose. You know? Yeah. So, anyway, we want to talk about uh, for the 50,000 subscriber episode. We thought we'd talk about Jaguar. Oh, <laughs> Un- unrelevant. Out of nowhere, he calls nowhere. me and he tells me, you know what, let's talk about Jaguar. I'm like... It's, a, uh, it's an interesting time for... What is wrong with you? <laughs> what, what is there to talk about Jaguar other than, you know, back in those back days... Back in those days. No, wait, back see, when, when horses are still on the road. <laughs> <laughs> see, you have experience with older Jags and maybe... Mm-hmm. S- half old Jags. Half old Jags, like up to the S-Type, yeah. which you did own. Uh, and we've driven many new Jags. And we've driven the XE. Um, I think that's the only thing. No, I, I've driven... We've driven, driven X, XE, we've driven S, XF. Yes. I have driven extensively yeah, the XF. I'm sure, I'm sure you've driven the XJ also, the, the newer ones. Uh, the, the latest, latest one, one, yes. Um, the the mid old one, I never, you know, that's mm. the weirdest. The, uh, the, 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 the XJ from... The actual XJ that you want to drive. The yeah. older ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I, I've never driven that. Yeah. But yeah, so I have, I have a very old Jaguar. 60 over years, so I, I can't remember how many years yeah. ago. And I have, I mean, I've been keeping track of where this company is going. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's quite interesting and it's quite sad also. And at the same time... I think it's, it's more sad. It's sad <laughs> and lately it's becoming a bit confusing also. <laughs> sad and confusing, that's a bad combination. Yeah, sad and confusing is a bad combination. <laughs> so we will, uh, let's talk about their past first, mm. why they are so famous mm. uh, and why their the reputation is slightly, in my opinion, uh, skewed in the wrong direction you know like I, I mean we'll, we'll get into that later la. okay uh, and then we'll talk about the confusing and sad future okay. possibly good possibly good but uh, uh, mostly sad I, I don't hate that company mm. I hate what they did for the past 30 years <laughs> mm. 
and 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 to be honest, I would start with the now. Yeah. I find I find I mean I, we'll, we'll talk about the back then later, but I struggle to find a justification for the continued existence of this brand. Yeah. You, have you heard of this guy, this band called Beyond? Uh, it's a ch- Cantonese band. Right. Oh, this is the famous uh, Cantonese song yeah. that everybody sings yeah, yeah, because the singer yeah. died in a crash. At the height of his career. Yeah. Have you heard of Nirvana? Of course you have. Yeah. Kurt Cobain died at the height <laughs> of his... I see where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if Jaguar died 35 years ago, yeah. Jaguar would be Nirvana, Jaguar would be Beyond. Mm. You know, if you died at the height of your... Your existence. Existence. Yeah. You wouldn't you are, you be Lancia today. You become which is like, what the heck are you producing? <laughs> what nonsense is this? You I, can, I can't even remember if Lancia is GM or FCA. I, I don't Lancia. care. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> the only thing in my head was a, 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 a Delta Integrale. Yeah. And then, of course, you have the older one in the 50s and the 60s. But come on, man. Whatever they're doing now is not relevant. Don't, don't, don't do that to your brand. Yeah. And that's exactly what I feel about Jaguar. And the fact that they're still selling makes me wonder, who the heck are buying these cars? Why do you want to spend equivalent Mercedes and BM and Audi money yeah. on something that is yeah. that is just not not competitive? Yeah, and that is the issue. My, my issue, lah. Yeah. Because you see, sometime in the last ten years, yeah. Jaguar and Land Rover merged, mm. and mm. actually for the first time, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. You know, today we think of Jaguar and Land Rover as the same company. Yeah, but. But they've never been. Then, yeah, they, they've were, never they been. Two failing yeah. British entities. At the of, same many, time. of many, <laughs> of many, of two many. of many. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rover went into BMW's thing. Uh, Jaguar was into Ford's yeah. group. Yeah. And then after they were both spat out by yeah. their respective <laughs> bosses, <laughs> then they joined. Yeah. And uh, the problem is, I, from my perspective, la, is that Ra- Range Rover found a way to diversify. And make themselves relevant. And make themselves relevant by competing in both the Mercedes BMW sphere mm. as well as the Bentley Rolls Royce sphere. Yeah, yeah, they did. Right. I, I don't like what they do. Mm. To be honest, I, I don't like Land Rover. Yeah. For many reasons, not just personal, mm. some objective reasons, but quant- qualitative reason. Right. But but nonetheless, I have to say they, they succeeded. Correct. Yeah. Even I cannot. They are very successful. If I see a Range Rover, mm. to a certain degree, I respect whoever's driving it. Mm-mm, you know, he, he has money. He has money. Because he overpaid for a product. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But like, you know, you have to have money to own yeah. a car like that. Yeah. It's, it's such a, a flex, you know, to have, to have a car with that many problems. But it's also like, design-wise, it is a trendsetter. I, I wouldn't say Land Rover has no reason to exist. Yeah. I just think they're a little bit overpriced for what you're getting mm. in terms of materials. and, and But, but tech-wise, you can't beat them yeah. when they're working. When they're working. <laughs> Off-roading, Jack, off-roading capability. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't deny they know what they're doing. Yeah. And design-wise, I really think they did revolutionize certain I, I like, I like. I have to say I like, but yeah. it's a bit shadowed by my dislike for that brand. Lah. Right. But, <laughs> but, but there is a reason for their existence. Yeah. The problem with Jaguar is... Oh, why do you exist? <laughs> why yeah. are you here? And not just that. You're not wanted in the party, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they, they never found a way to get into Bentley Range Rover... Rolls Royce, mm. that level. That's not their forte. Mm. And but the thing is, a lot of Indian uncles would consider them to be a half step between Mercedes and Bentley Rolls Royce, which is very weird. which is weird. And the Jaguar is, never pretended to be above Mercedes. Correct. They were competitive at a point. Yeah. They were pretentiously competitive for for the rest of their existence. <laughs> But they never actually said they were uh, above. Yeah, that's the mistake. They should have, because they knew they were uncompetitive, okay. created a, sec- a separate line or at least a separate product that could have, at least you can say the XJ doesn't compete with the S-Class. It competes with the Ghost or whatever it is. They could have done that, uh, uh, but they uh, never uh. did. They never did. And yeah. that is the reason why I think that they are not relevant. Because they never pushed, they never pushed that aspect, that pretentious aspect, into something concrete. You know? you, you're right. You know, actually, I think as you're talking, I realize something. Jaguar should have dropped the S-class product. Yeah. Drop the E-class product. Mm. Come up with what you know. One Roadster. One E-type replacement that is so expensive. Screw expensive lah. Just just to make a point. That's that's what they did with XK120. Mm. They made an engine and then go like. How are we going to shock the world with, mm. with this engine? Okay, let's build a cage around the engine and call it a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got know I me? Mean? Yeah, yeah. so, so, they should have done that. Then from there, they only make... They, they become the Porsche. Mm. They only make... Go back to their heritage, which is sports. Yeah. Right? Sports car. They, they, this is what I'm saying. Their, their heritage is not 
luxury, luxury. Yeah, it's they're, not. They're, they're heritage, me looking back, yeah. it's actually engineering. It's all sports car engine engineering, yeah. you know? And then, and then build on that. It's like Porsche. Build on that. You, you make one sports car, yeah. then you from there, you, you churn out a Roadster version, which is cheaper. You yeah. churn out a four-door version, like a Panamera, which is maybe a bit cheaper. Then you jack up the Panamera and then call it an active cross tourer, whatever, whatever nonsense you want to call it, but but built on your heritage, which is actual. You're not a luxurious car. Yeah, they are the not, luxury was tacked on later. Ah, it, as Mercedes and BMW and Audi go into this market, they they kind of tag along yeah. and then pretend to be in the club, but they, they that's not their heritage. Exactly. Hmm. So, so let, oh, let's start. We have to talk yeah. about the the, the old heritage. Age. Yeah. So. Let's not go too far back yeah. because at one point they were called SS Moto. <laughs> <laughs> wrong name, bro. Wrong, wrong name. <laughs> Especially fresh out of World War II. You don't want to be called no, SS. No, no. This, is, this is before World War II. Mm. So during World War II, I think the British government asked all the industries to stop making oh, yeah, yeah. cars. But they were a bit bad, bad boy. La. <laughs> Jaguar. Jaguar secretly were uh, engineering an uh, engine for when the war is over. Oh, wow. During World War II. This is like... Oh, they, they are so confident they're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they were doing this while the bombing of London was going on. Because <laughs> like, I know what's their plan. Because if the German won, SS! <laughs> exactly. And if they lose, before the Germans can come back, the, the auto industry can come back, and say, look, look, I got sports car. <laughs> so, and it worked. Because when in by 1947 and 48, yeah. They had a working engine that was so over-engineered that it was in production until 1992. Oh, you're talking about the XK? The XK engine. I thought, I thought they, they... Oh, no. They, oh, I didn't know they were working on it so early. They were working from 1943 during wow. the war. Yeah. They were... Mm, and no they, wonder they didn't want to say it. Because... <laughs> <exactly. laughs> we have a war fighting and you are spending time developing a sports car engine. Exactly. <laughs> what is wrong with you? That being said, the yeah. engine lasted from 1949. Mm. Was, was 40, it 49? 50? I think, um, late 40s. Uh, late 40s. Ah, I think it's 49 because that's when they launched the XK120. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So from 49 until what, 1992? Uh, yeah. Man. That is a 50 years run for an engine. Even, like, even Toyota is scratching their engine. <laughs> <laughs> even the answer engine didn't run that long. If you think Beetle and Mini is amazing, wait until you see the Jaguar XK engine. Yeah. And that engine is called the XK. Yeah, and here's the crazy part. Double overhead cam. Oh yeah, 1949. 1949. Aluminum head. Aluminum uh, body. head, uh, cast iron body. Cast iron body. Twin right. cam. Yeah. Twin cam. Not the first twin cam engine. Mm. No. But one of the first. Mm. I would say maybe the second or the third. Yeah. Mass production twin cam and not, I, don't come and tell me about racing engine. Dude. <laughs> this is like in a production car. In, in, in what the production would, car. What would be a yeah. 3 series kind of price lab? Talk about Mercedes. Mercedes only started mass producing twin cam engine in the 90s. Mm. Isn't it? In fact, they were so proud of it, they call it the masterpiece. Remember or not? When they put yeah. in the... When they put when in, it went from 260 to 280. Ah, yeah. They put in a masterpiece, twin cam. That late. That 90s. Late. You know, you, 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 I remember growing up in the 80s and 90s, seeing Japanese car with twin cam engine, yeah. with giant stickers at the side. D-O-H-C. Yeah. <laughs> you remember? D-O-H-C was like the hottest thing in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. Because like, the rest of the world, I will discover twin cam. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Jaguar was doing it in 1949. 1949. And, and, and it has some characteristics of twin cam, mm. to be honest. It has some, but, but I mean, I have a Jaguar Mark II. Mm. It is a 1962 and it has that XK engine. Right. XK engine is like one of the longest running engine for Jaguar. They put, they plonk it into their XK120, 140, 150. Yeah. Then they plonk it into the E-Type, but of course E-Type eventually will get a V12. Yeah. But the XK was the original body, was engine was supposed to be mated to. Yeah. They plonk it into the XJ. They plonk it into all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, yours is the Type? S-Type. S-Type. Uh, no, hey, sorry. No, the, uh, Mark II. Mark Mark II. II yeah. uh, my, mine was the Mark II, not the S-Type. S-Type, there's two S-Type. There's one in the uh, uh, late 90s. There's yeah. one in, in 60s, late 60s. Uh, mine is not the S-Type. Mine is the Mark II before the S-Type. Right. S-Type is basically a rework of the Mark II. I see. Uh, because when they launched a Mark X, Mark 10, uh, they put in the independent suspension from Mark 10, they miniaturize it and they put it into the Mark 2 and then they, 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 they call it the S-Type. Yeah, so the XK engine was, was quite revolutionary. I have to say, I fired up my XK today. <laughs> just to get a taste. <laughs> just, to get, just to remind myself and I realized it, it wasn't great by today's standard. It's been noisy, 
You know, it's, but you have to understand, this is 70 year, years ago. Yeah. And it was smoother than most engine that I felt up until the 80s. Mm. So they are 40 years ahead, not only in smoothness, in power delivery, or also in terms of technology, they were at least 50 years ahead. In, in 50 years, bro! That's insane. Man. That's insane, man. Half a century in front yeah. using twin cam. But, but, uh, this, this is where it gets interesting. It had twin cam, but it only has two off per cylinder. Oh, ah. so not a uh, six times two. <laughs> not six times four, six times two. It's not a 24 waft, it's, it's a 12, 12 waft okay. twin cam engine. But it, th th this is where it gets interesting because a 24 waft in line six twin cam engine has some problem. Now, of course, by today, this problem would have been sorted. But even in the 90s, I drove the 124 mm. with a twin cam and a single cam. The 300E and then the E300. Yeah. Was it E300 or the, E280? There's a 24 valve and the 12 valve ah, are the same thing. The here. 12 valve is a single cam. The yeah. 24 valve is a twin cam. The 24 valve on paper was superior, of course. Yeah. Uh, in terms of numbers and everything. But the single cam is more immediate yeah. and it's smoother. And a lot of people say it's cheaper to maintain also. Ah, a lot there you cheaper. Go. A lot cheaper to maintain. So actually, if I were to buy a 124 coupe, yeah. I would go for the 12 valve. Mm. Dude. The power difference is significant, but you're talking about old car. Yeah. You're not pushing it to the limit. La. You get what I mean? I want that feel of Mercedes, which is smoothness, that uprightness of its drive. Yeah. Uh, I think the 12 off is better. Mm. Why? Because it's more immediate. You step on it, it comes in. Yeah. The 24 off, you step on it, you hear, you hear commotion. Like something's going on. Somebody inside the engine is whipping. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! And then you hear, dum, 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 dum. then it comes. But yeah. when it gives you, it gives a lot. I mean, I had the 260 124. Yeah. It was a single. It was single cam. Single cam. Mm. And the first month plus, mm. there was an issue with uh, power delivery. Okay. And I didn't know what it was. Uh. So mm. I sent it to my mechanic. Within one day, less than like four hours, he called me up and said everything solved. Oh. And after I drove it, when it was done up, bloody hell, it was Buddha. a world of difference. Mm. It was so much more immediate than the mm. E34. The single cam has that. You step on it and it comes. Yeah. The delay between your accelerator to the response is nil. Yeah. The twin cam engine, up until even 10 years ago, you have this problem where you step on it and then you see the RPM try to climb, yeah. but it's not translating into power. Yeah. But, but here's the big but. Jaguar XK engine, even though it's twin cam, the power is immediate. Mm. And it revs, it climbs and revs, wang, wang. I mean, come on. <laughs> even, 70 year old engine. Even a 90 sports car, you don't go wang, wang like that. <laughs> That's, that's Ferrari level rev climb. You can see the videos I post once in a while. The RPM just whoom, whoom. Insane. So you have a twin cam engine with mega valves, huge yeah. valves, huge valves, all right, that responds like a single cam but give you more power than it should have in 1950s. Yeah. I was just reading 160 horsepower from the first application of that engine. 1949, yeah. bro. And that was the, the lowest power output for that this for, for that four. displacement yeah. yeah it just went up and up and up and up after that yeah it's crazy and then that is not the only engine that they kept producing for many many years mm. the v12 engine which oh. came much that, that's later. a single cam that's a single single cam, single cam yeah single cam with you that yeah. also ran for like 30 years yeah mad la. yeah they non-stop produce it and they had le mans racers which were successful and they're they not a, compared to like all these other legacy brands they're not that Old, they're not, they, their legacy is not that long. Mm. They were basically the new kid on they're the block. Actually, they are. They're not that old. You know? If you look at Mercedes, yeah. even BM. BM goes to before World War II. They're making even, planes. Even uh, Peugeot yeah. goes to before, Saab. before 20th century. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but Jaguar was young, man. Yeah. Jaguar was like during war, right, slightly before the war. Yeah. And they were making some small cars and whatnot. But they really picked up only after the war. Yeah, when they stopped calling themselves SS. <laughs> uh, which, which means they're younger than Nissan and Toyotas yeah. and, and even Mazdas and Mitsubishi, needless yeah. to say. Yeah. So Jaguar, technically speaking, is a very young brand. It is only in our head yeah. and the uncles that start sentence with those days <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. That, that, that make Jaguar look like an old brand. They, they, will, they equate Jaguar to Aston Martin, which is wrong. You know? <laughs> Aston Martin is Ferrari. Yeah. Jaguar yeah. is in between BMW and Alfa Romeo somewhere there. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is very interesting because I think, I think heritage was if you, if you boil down what Jaguar is, Jaguar is not luxury. It is Britain's BMW. Yeah, it is. It is Britain's BMW. It was performance as interpreted by the Brits as opposed to being interpreted by the Germans. Yeah. 
and no bro, no motorbike component. <laughs> uh, and 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 I think, and I think, what people associate it with luxury is because it's British. Mm. So British has that. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> we know what that yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> that stiff, stiff, stiff upper lip. Correct. You know. Yeah. Uh, thing. So. I, I personally felt that Jaguar should have just gone back to their heritage yeah. and their heritage is not luxury, it's not old English It's performance It's, it's not just performance, it's state of the art, forward looking yeah. performance Correct But we don't see that We don't see that at all Their engines now, they're using this Ingenium engines which are shared with Land Rover Yeah and on Ingenium the, Ingenium It's oh. just basically a, a very modernised version of It is powerful It, right? is, powerful. it is powerful yeah. And it's a uh, hybrid, mild hybrid and all that But it's, they're not doing anything that Mercedes and BMW are not doing no, Nothing and they're special not, And they're not doing it better than Mercedes or BMW Yeah, no, it's, it's not special It yeah. is a powerful engine but I've seen many powerful inline Correct. fours They're they, using inline fours right? They're using inline fours and inline six Okay yeah. uh, Inline six or V6? Mm. Inline six Inline six now with Ingenium comes with inline six in, Oh inline wow six, yeah. In my opinion they should have just Leapfrogged everyone and gone full fledged into electric way, way before this. Mm. By 2015, 2015, yeah. 2016, they should have leap, leapt onto it. They only committed to electric 2020. Because the XK engine, yeah. the twin cam in line 6 XK, launched in 1949, a full 50 years before most other makers would go into twin cam engine. Mm. So, what you said about them going into electric, they should have done it. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. At the very least, there should have been a Skunk Works project yeah. inside the company, yeah. secretly working on it. Yeah. So, and, and they do have Jaguar, I, what's this, um, Formula E. Yeah. They've been doing Formula E there you go. before Mercedes did, and Mercedes left already, they're still doing it. So technically, they should have an They should have called it an E type! In fact, instead, they do the I Pace, which is a okay ish luxury electric SUV, but it doesn't really. It, it is as if Prince Charles was hinting them. Remember when William got married? Mm -hmm. Prince Charles gave him an electric resto mod type, uh, E type. Ah, that was his gift. And then recently I read <laughs> David Beckham and Victoria Beckham gave to their eldest son who just got married an XK, I can't remember, 120, 140, or 150, I can't remember which one. It's one of the XK. Uh, that carry the original XK engine. You see, even the model is named after the engine. The entire company builds an engine and go like, hmm, what do we, what do, do, we do with this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's build a cage around it and sell it as a car. Yeah, we, we, we sell the engine, that's why we call it XK. XK, there you go. So they, they, they took an XK electric modified, it resto mod it to an electric and oh, then nice. gave it to his son. So it is as if these people were already hinting to Jaguar, dude, come on, you have a perfect name for an electric type. And you, you squandered it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you squandered it. it. You're just not on top of your game. Huh? You yeah. forgot who you are. Yeah. You forgot what made you great. You you let the Germans lead you wherever you are not supposed to go. Correct. You lost your direction. You give cheapskate stuff. Yeah. Pretending, that's the worst, pretentiously pretending that you are doing something which you're not good at. Yeah, correct. And, and then, uh, yeah, the worst part is what, even with the F type, which is supposed to be the E type's replacement. <laughs> In concept, it was supposed to be a hybrid. Oh, so I it? think conceptually, they were supposed to go hybrid and then full electric with that it car. never happened. Never happened. And then the whole reason I brought up Jaguar is because yesterday they announced that this is the last year of production for the F-Type. After okay. this, by 2025, no more XE, no more XF. XJ is already dead. It's uh, been there for a few years. Yeah. They yeah, stopped yeah. selling it. So they're going to discontinue essentially the entire range. petrol range. Okay. That is their... That is 80 to 90% of all the products they have. <laughs> okay. And they have not even announced a new electric car yet. Okay, we're going to stop our business. <laughs> and here's the worst part. What are you going to do? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, here's the worst part. They hired a former Renault CEO, Thierry <laughs> Bolloré. So he came into Jaguar and he made all these big promises. We're going to go electric by okay. 2025. And then uh, late last year, he, he just quit with no announcement. <laughs> he just left the company. Oh, shit. So they had to put in an interim uh, CFO as a CEO okay. or something like that. Okay. And it's been, I think, months now. No announcement of a new CEO. Mm. No uh, announcement of what plans are happening. Uh, no announcement of what's happening with the XJ. Yeah. Because they were developing it. Then Thierry came in and said, no, don't develop, don't develop this car. Just do electric. Okay. So they, they had a pre-production car ready for the XJ. Mm. It was already testing. They already had the production stuff set up in the factory. And it was cancelled. Basically, you're saying the company is in shambles. It's in shambles. They don't know what they're doing. They had a, I mean, when they said, we're going to do electric, that's a good step. Right. But a bit late, but at mm. least you've made the step. 
And then suddenly now, it just feels like there's no leader, there's no direction. There's no direction. Yeah, it's a bit scary. I, I, I like Jaguar. I like it, mm. despite what people think. Despite the amount of bitch I bitch about, the amount of bitching I, just, I do. I was just going to say, despite what people think, you mean despite what people think of how you perceive Jaguar? <laughs> you because actually, I bitch about them a lot. Yeah, but but do. I, I don't deny the fact that they were, they were the shit lah. They knew what they were doing and they were doing it on par, if not better than the Germans. Sure, yeah. um, they were never as reliable as the Germans. That's that's for sure. Yeah. But they, are, they, they have character here. They have character. There are things that make a Jaguar a Jaguar. Because of the engine sound, it sounds like something growling. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit noisy by today's standard. But XK, mind you, 50 years production range. Yeah. Right? And the- there, there is a character that I, I, I even feel into their sad loss for years. Which is, they, they are like an alternative to BMW. There is a fleet-footedness to the way Jaguar drives. That it, I, I completely do not feel in the XE, XF. And the latest XJ. Once they started just copying what BMW is doing. Ah, in fact, they made it worse. Yeah. Because at least BMW took their the same transmission, the ZF. which is the ZF, yeah. and then they make magic out of it. You know, yeah. you know, it's like floating in the air. You know, you have yeah. rainbow and yeah. Apparently, you know what the magic is from, right? Huh? Oh. It's partly not the transmission. You know? It wasn't the transmission. It's something. It was BMW, wasn't it? It was BMW itself. <laughs> no, it was. It was something that they attached to the transmission oh, wow. to recover. The uh, loss, loss momentum. Power. So okay. instead of the alternator being charged and seeping energy from the engine, right. the alternator is only charged when you are decelerating by recovering energy from the transmission. Wow. So it, it breaks harder when you just re- let go yeah. of the throttle. You, you know, I, I remember this very clearly. You know, we drove three series. We yeah. drove XE, right? Mm. Both are equal range product. Mm. Both running ZF8. Mm. I remember both running ZF8. It's exactly the same gearbox. Same thing. But in a BMW, wow, when you lift... The RPM goes up and down, up and down the range, like like dancing across the rev range, you know. Correct. The, the, you remember the XE? Mm, it was. It's you, like a hammer. Yeah, you lift and the throttle and is still. Whoa, it's like, nah. Hey, you didn't do work, isn't it? It's yeah. like they just attach it to the engine and program it, and that's it. There you go. Okay. It's it's it's. The BMW take the ZF and made God out of it, and in hands of Jaguar, it's just a pile of junk metal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It's it's just sad. Yeah. It's very sad. To, to be, be uh, engin- like a company was, that was known for engineering, yeah. to produce a product that is literally worse than BMW and worse than anyone they're, else using the same. They're not part. BM equivalent. Man. They're far, man. Especially in the past five years, they are far. Right. Yeah, very far. What about Jaguar design as of late? What do you think? Nothing special. The XE won some award. I looked at the thing and go like, what a what is this thing? It looks like. It looks like a refresh of the Honor I got Type R, the the the, the Euro R, yeah, yeah, the, the VJ one. Yeah, actually, with uh-huh. the thin lines at yeah. the back. Yeah, it, it looks exactly. It looks like an updated version, with less character mm. than an Accord Euro R. What model was it? Uh, CL7, I think. You know yeah. the the one. Mm. I mean, come on. The it's true. Jaguar ten, design ten, was ten years late. Was state of the art. Look at look at how the XJ series one and two the the tail light. Yeah. Yes, it's a very British thing. How they they were influenced mostly. Di- uh, it is a horizontal influence from Bentley and Rolls Royce. Mm. But look at that ass. How it influenced Bufori even. You see Bufori. I suspect they're using Jaguar series two lights <laughs> <laughs> for for their uh, what is that called? Uh? Geneva. No, uh, not Geneva. The they did the the two seater one. Uh, La Joy. La La Hoya. La Hoya. La Hoya. La Hoya. So the La Hoya was obviously using a Jaguar. I can't. I think it's a Series Two light. But when it becomes the Geneva, the shape is still there, and that is a Jaguar thing. You know, if I sit down with the owner, I would tell it, "Bro, you got that from a Jaguar, isn't it?" <laughs> and it's so Jaguar-like, you know. It's so distinctive. It's so gorgeous. You know? And and the modern Jag just look like a Korean car with a lot of bling. <laughs> the problem with the modern Jag yeah. is that everything they did was done by Ford one day. <laughs> you know, when Ford owned them. Yeah. Apparently, this was the thing. Ford would ask the designers of all the brands that they own, Aston Martin, Jaguar, Volvo. Mm. They would basically take a peek at their design and then just take, just steal. Because I'm your parent, ma, so I can just take, 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 take. That's why you see the, the hexagonal grill that became Ford's staple. Oh, yeah, yeah. It came it from Aston Martin. Aston, yeah. yeah. So a lot of what Jaguar is doing now was done 
with the Ford Mondeo in 2016, 2015. But that being said, you know, some of the more beautiful Jaguars yeah. came during the lost years. Mm. S-Type, absolutely gorgeous. Mm. X-Type, shit car, beautiful, right? It looked like a miniaturized XJ. Yes, and they done it well. The Not like the perfect. C-Class. Yeah. Yeah. C-Class, C-Class should... only start looking good in the past five, six years. Mm. The previous C, I yeah. don't know, I, I, you are one of those people who like the 190E. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I looked at the 190 and what the f- is that? Really? I find it so proportionate. No! That 124 is proportional. The 190E is like, what on earth is that? That then from 190E became the C. Yeah. With the triangle. Oh, that was the ugliest yes, thing I've does, ever seen. Yeah. That was the ugliest thing. Then it became my, my C, which is the peanut eye. Yeah. It's okay. It's slightly better because it looks like a... This looks like a shrunken down E, that's all. But it, it's built like shit. <laughs> But so from then on, it has never looked good. It yeah. always looked like disproportionate mm. until recently. You know, the previous model and the current model, yeah. both are... 205 are, and 206 yeah. look good. Uh, bo- both are, are good looking. Yeah. So Germans have has been trailing man, in terms of design. Jaguar actually, even during the last year, good looking as type. Until today, I would love to own one if it's not so shitty. <laughs> it is so <laughs> shitty, I, I tell you. It is so shitty that a brand new as type I was driving, I remember, from Alostar back down, down to KL. Mm. I was reaching about 150, 140, 50. I see the bonnet resonating to the... <laughs> you know what I saw? I saw that in the x that I drove uh, two days ago. Yesterday. <laughs> but it, it, the Jaguar was worse, man. It was literally... <laughs> then you let go. <laughs> you step on it. <laughs> like, what the heck were you doing, man? There was one time in 2016, I went on a trip with Volvo. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the Volvo execs were there, and they were telling us about the, the lost years like, under Ford. Oh, under, Ford, Ford lost years. Premier. Yeah. Oh, Volvo's lost years. Everybody's lost years. <laughs> <laughs> Pre- what they call Premier Auto Group or something. Uh-huh. Like. Um, so, Volvo, Jaguar, and a few other companies, like Aston yeah. Martin, were all under Ford. Yeah. And um, the Jaguar exec during one of the motor shows went on stage, I think talking about the, either the S type or the X type, mm. went on stage and announced to the public how much cost cutting they managed to work into the car as if it's an achievement because Ford gave them the KPI of cutting all these costs they went on stage and and announced it to the world it tells you what they're thinking behind you know their, their daily work you know what they need to achieve yeah. it's all about the car it's about reducing costs achieving certain measurements in your yeah. car achieving certain environmental it is an achievement especially if you're an engineer if you can if you can work the spec Mm. and still satisfy all the requirements mm. because emissions and all that is yeah, difficult. Yeah, it, it has to, yeah. It is an achievement, but yeah. it's not marketing. <laughs> you don't want to tell your customer, hey, look look at what we shittily did. <laughs> you want to do the opposite of that. And we managed to buy an entire dashboard for 50 ringgit. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about that? Uh, but there was one thing about Jaguar that, I mean, even today, kind of does work, la, which is, I think... The proportions. Uh. If you look at the I-Pace and the, the E-Pace and all that, on the outside, they look a lot bigger, a lot more dynamic and all that. But when you sit inside, they're tiny cars. Tiny. Yeah. But all Jaguars have been tiny on the inside. This is heritage, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so where, tiny. Where's the luxury that people talk uh, about? Exactly. All the Indian they're uncles tiny, who man. love Jaguar. They're tiny. <laughs> Nothing. Uh. No, I, I, I hate Jaguars with a passion because I think I love them secretly. <laughs> I want them to, to at least don't suck. Hmm. But they consistently suck so bad. That's why I'm so angry with it. Because I really want to love my S type. I uh, I had a Jaguar S type 2001 or 2000 or 99 around there lah. A three liter V6, the AJ hmm. engine, beautiful engine, beautiful sounding. Growls, man. I remember that sound. It's not as lively as a BMW. It's it, it pounds a bit harder than it should. You know, older Jacks like wow 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 like that. It goes up and down, up and down, dances a, 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 along the rev range. Um, the, the AJ doesn't do that, but it growls. It goes, it's beautiful. It has very good character. Um, but of course, if you were to put it on a track and fight with the BM, it would lose. But I would love it more for its character if it doesn't break down all the time. If it doesn't have all sorts of faults all the time. It doesn't have plastic panel snapping out of place for no reason other than because Malaysia a bit hot. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's horrible, man. And that plastic I still see in Range Rover up until very recently. They still use the same ah, shitty plastic. Up until recently. Recently, I, I went and checked what the last last one we did was what? Vela? Mm. Was it a Vela? No, no, no. We did the we did Discovery and the Evoque. And then the Defender. Ah, okay. In the Evoque, I went down and touched every plastic that you don't see and you don't touch. They, they've they increased. Changed, yeah, they've changed that. They've changed that. I, I, I really want to like this brand, really, because I love them. I love their character, their, their personality. But they're just so hard to love, man. And now they have no personality. So yeah, I don't know whether Jaguar will be watching this. Uh, yeah, I probably hope, not. Uh, yeah, they won't. But what, what do you think, what would you, your ideal Jaguar product be for the next electric? I, I, I'll tell you what, the electrification of vehicle is, is a reshuffle of the entire industry. Yeah. You see a lot of Chinese car. Chinese uh, BYD just outsold Tesla in China. Nice. Now you might be thinking, hey, of course uh, this is China. Wait, no, the Chinese people are absolutely Western worshipping when it comes to product buying. When it comes to branded goods, yep. they love the Western. So for BYD to, for the first time, it didn't beat the whole year, but it's starting to beat uh, in terms of sales volume every month. It, 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 it tells you... you it tells you they are they are there already, but but to be honest, that is a very low <laughs> target said, yeah. because, because Tesla was not that great. Yeah, but it's great in terms of sales volume and in, it's great in terms of perception. As a product itself, of course, I, I personally feel the Mercedes and even some Kias and Hyundai's are doing better than Tesla. Yeah, but that's not what people think. People still think, oh, Tesla. Yeah. For for BYD to start overtaking them, I think that's a big big thing. And 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 I think the Chinese automaker knows this. It says that because your perception of them will change so easily. Yeah. Okay. Aura, great war motto, you remember what the heck? But come out with the aura good cat. Ooh. It's that moment where Toyota outsells Ford. Yeah. yeah it's, it's that moment. Yeah. yeah, it's that moment. It's that moment when the giant crumble. Yeah. And then it is a completely new ecosystem. Yeah. You know, do your best, you will win. Yeah. You know, and I think Jaguar should take this opportunity um, to rediscover their heritage, which is not luxury. In fact, Jaguar was relatively cheap, you know, when it, in the sixties. An E-Type was cheaper, way cheaper than an SL. Oh, way cheaper than an SL equivalent. So they they were not more expensive than German, but they were avant-garde in their technology and their design. Look at the E-Type. It's a freaking sculpture on the road, man. Now, of course, technically speaking, personally for me, the E-Type doesn't speak to me as, as strongly as the XK does. Mm. The XK 120, 140, 150, 150 specifically. I absolutely love it. But even that, let's go back to XK 150. It looks like, it looks like a... Yeah, like a teardrop. Ah, it looks like a teardrop, doesn't it? A reverse teardrop. Beautiful. Yeah. They are beautiful. Sculpt your car. Mm. Screw ergonomics. Jaguar has never been ergonomic. You got me. They are yeah. small on this. I sit inside my Mark II. You will barely fit at the back. But I, it, it tells you British men are not that tall, lah. The chances <laughs> are <laughs> British men are not that tall. I mean, their, their cars are not that big. And look at that. They fit into the Mini as well. Yeah. So, so technically speaking, I think Jaguar should really look into their heritage. And their heritage is not luxury. Their heritage is not British. British heritage It's not. Their heritage is artist avant-garde artistic design and technology of their engine. Yeah. They build an engine and say, what are we going to do? Let's build a car around this engine. You know, that's what they did. Yeah. And, and they should do that, yeah. I think. Take your Formula E engine, yeah. build a car around it. Call it an E-Type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Jaguar E-Type. Yeah. So I think, I think that's what they should do, whether they have the money to or not. Of course, they have not been performing. I haven't looked at their figures, but don't let people compare you like that because you cannot outplay the Germans. They are in this business so long mm. and they perfected the formula. Not only did they perfect, the, they ride the formula for the market to play. So don't play their game. You won't win one. Come up with something like a Mark II, which is not a C-Class, not an E-Class. Just, it's just a car yeah. that house an amazing engine with four-door because most people need four-door. You know? So because when they make the XK engine, they... They, 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 they just built a sports car around it because yeah. that's what captures attention. They wanted to put, uh, they wanted to develop a four-cylinder one, but they failed, repeatedly failed a four-cylinder XK because it's just not smooth, not up to their standard. So they say, screw this, we're just going to reduce the, the size of the, 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 the displacement down to a 2.4 and plonk it into a four-door saloon. And it came out. 
it was a bit small to be honest. It's smaller than today's C class standard, but it was treated like an E class. You get what I mean? So just do that. Just do come up with an amazing drivetrain, plonk it into whatever. Don't let people classify you. Oh, is this a D segment or is this? A just do a Taycan. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just do a Taycan. What is a Taycan, dude? No, 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 no. Is it an E class? Is it an ah. S class? No, no. It's it's a it's a sporty car with four doors. Yeah, and it's electric. Because it's an electric car. Period. You can you can replay. You can. You can interpret the rules however you want. I mean, that sound, that sound is important, man. That sound, now, nowadays we're all used to pipe in. Yeah. So pipe in something that, that, that reminds us of, of that old Jaguar. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that is what, I really want to like them, but the XE and the XF period is just embarrassing. <laughs> it's just very embarrassing. And we're still not out of that period, technically. Oh, is they're it? Still selling the oh, they're still selling those until cars until next year. <laughs> yeah. And the worst part is they're never, they were never even like a Mercedes kind of thing where the XF has to be a taxi. It's uh, yeah, uh, the E Class was a taxi yeah. and has been. Correct. Somebody dug out some picture. You know, I see Batman, Mercedes Batman E Class, a 200D, uh. going for like 70, 80K. <laughs> then, then I looked at the picture, uh, somebody dug out the other day, dude, this is a yellow and black. So taxi? taxi. <laughs> Especially the D, bro. Don't touch the D. That yeah. thing has been a taxi, bro. It's, it it runs the circle. It circled the earth probably 12 times. <laughs> Before we end, I yeah. want to talk about that for just yeah. a short, yeah. like a couple of minutes. You know, people thought they equate Mercedes Benz with quality, right? Yeah, yeah. But actually, uh, I, was, I, wrote, I just wrote an article about the 123. Mm. 123 yeah. was the, the E class before the 124. Yeah, the very like in taxi spec. Mm. Yeah, I still don't looking. find it good looking. In it's, fact, in fact, I don't find most E class good looking. But but that was that I think uh, that was the Mercedes Benz that built the reputation that to this day mm. still of quality of quality. You know why? Nah? That was the cheapest Mercedes Benz you can buy back then. Back then, okay. So all the taxis were that. But the but E class had predecessor. It had, it had. You had the Batman period. But this was the best selling. Two point seven million. Around oh, the dude, whole that's world. a lot. That's bro. a lot. That's a lot, bro. Two point seven million outsold literally all the rivals. Yeah. And it didn't compromise on anything because the rear suspension was taken from an S class. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, the front suspension was okay. From an the front. The yeah. rear is. Rear is some simplified thing. Yeah. Uh, but it was. It gave everyone a taste of Mercedes Benz. Okay. And that is your C class today. That no, that is not really a C class. That's your A class today. Can you imagine? Yeah, but but someone... you can't fit in an A. I can't fit in. Exactly. A. So uh, today's. Entry level, let's say you are now making a bit of money, right? Aspiring, like, aspiring, aspiring uh, right? Uh, you got enough money to buy yeah. the cheapest Benz. Yeah. And you go inside and it's an A180 yeah. sedan. Uh, let's, yeah. let's give him that. That compared to back in the 70s, it's 80s. One, two, three. It's 200, a 123. 2 liter. 200 or diesel. Inline 4, la. Don't, la. don't diesel. Don't diesel. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't diesel. And, and inline 4, no power, yeah. nothing. Yeah. But the technology inside, the quality is uncompromised. It's built, it's built like a tank. Yeah. Uh, even Ponton, I, I, I get up close and personal with the Ponton. The way the door sounds. Oh, the way, the, the accuracy in which the door closes. Yeah. Wow. You can't, you know, you can't get, get that in a that, Jaguar. Yeah. No? Even today's A class, the CKD yeah. ones, you close it, doesn't yeah. close properly. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> I swear, every compact car that's CKD here, my F, doesn't my close properly. My F30 3 Series. Same. Same, it didn't close properly, but the door was installed here. So I, exactly. I, 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 I fought it to the, the guy here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I, so E class. E class, man. Can you imagine back in the day, the cheapest Mercedes Benz you can, you can get? It's not a C class, it's not an A class, it's an E class. Because I think product range was smaller then. Of course. And you have two cars. There's no segmentization. You're small and you're big. Yeah. yeah. You're small, you're big. You know, segmentization happens today because of squeezing more money out of you. Yeah. That's right. And Be more flexible modular yeah, platforms yeah. where yeah. you can change the size yeah. of the entire yeah. vehicle. Yeah. 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 Um, not necessarily better, because when times are simpler, you have one small, one big. They put their heart to it, they yeah. make a good product. Correct. Now that being said, I, I never find Mercedes good looking. In fact, I think Mercedes was never good looking post-war. Post-war. <laughs> and I have a theory, I have a theory. Okay. I think the Germans hates themselves. Wow. Post-World <laughs> post War II is that they don't dare to flex their muscle. But all their designers were Italian, Yeah, but, but put that their product that tries to look American beside an actual American. Mm. You see that Batman? Their people's fin is like this side, their fin is like... <laughs> you, you see that restraint? Mm. And I think that restraint comes from their self-hate or their shame after World War II. To, so they, to be more restrained. Uh, to be very restrained, to, to, not, to not do or say or sing or speak louder than anyone else, but just, just do one thing. Mm. Do your, what you do right. 
That's why they build their car so well because they channel all their energy just that side. Yeah. You want to say an E class is good looking? I don't think any E had been good looking until recently. Yeah. Huh? Most E has been disproportionate well into the 2000s. Look at the the what was the I can't remember Mercedes model name. The one with uh, after the round is 210. 210 after that slam is 211. 211 after slam is 212. 212. Follow <laughs> number. <laughs> it's not rocket science. <laughs> No, okay, the 212 facelift. Oh, I have an excuse. At least I own a 210. <laughs> before, that's why I can remember. So the 210 was not a good looking car. No. I'll tell you why it's not a good looking car. Because you think... <laughs> No, it's before Kachang. No, it's 210 is a round, round. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot of fans of 210s out there. Oh, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. Very easy. 210 comes out in 1997. Yeah. 1998 comes out Jaguar S Type. Yeah. Just, just park the Jaguar S Type beside the 210. No need to say anything. For me, it's like this 210 came out the same time as E39. <laughs> Park the two cars next to each other, you uh, tell me which one looks better. <laughs> no need to say anything. <laughs> uh, then after that, 211, right? Yeah. Okay, 211, it's not ugly, it's not pretty, mm. it's, it's, it is. It's expressive. Okay. A version of the W10. I, I remember when the 212 came out, I the face was so shocking, right? Square. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. But then you look at the whole car, wow, disproportionate. Mm. The Very. back, the back. It's struggling with the uh, tree box shape. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's it's very disproportionate. Yeah. It was only after that they start looking a little bit better. Yeah. In the facelift, they melt the car uh, and then made it to some people uglier. It's it's way uglier because it's just wrong. It was a square design that, that got melted. melted. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So E class to me even even go back to only one two four. I have to say one two four is proportionate. I wouldn't call it pretty. Yeah. I would say it's, it's handsome. It's timeless. It's handsome. Mm. Yeah. It's 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 proportionate. But one two three is oh yo I cannot lah. You don't like. Yeah. One, two, three, cook, okay. No? Yeah. <laughs> I cannot la, sorry. I cannot la. Okay, yeah. one, one thing that one, two, three has that one, two, four doesn't. Uh. <laughs> I have to brace myself before I say It's it. a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> it has that lack of plastic okay. on the, on the because, inside because, and the outside. Because by the time one, two, four came, plastic's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at the bumpers, Chrome. chrome. When you look at the the you know the badges, yeah. everything everything is chrome metal. Chrome, yeah. You know, plastic know. is minimal. So it's when you go inside so the ugly, car, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it has that, <laughs> it has that old world feel. Okay, okay. But if you want to get something old world, that's probably the best car you can get. You should get because okay. parts are everywhere. Okay. And it's built to a different standard. Okay. If you go and get an old car like a Beetle or something like yeah. that, everything is cheap. Yeah. It's just made to be as cheap as possible. Yeah. yeah. So but, but, but my question: Why don't you go before that? You know, the Batman. Uh, prices. <laughs> uh, I mean, today's prices. Lah. Right. I, I don't think they were modern enough back then. At least the 123 has a certain. Lux. Mm, modern. I mean, injection. Li, oh. <laughs> was it injected? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, injection engine. 123 was injected. Lah. Not all. Okay. If you have an E at the back, it's ah, injection. Okay, okay. Yeah, I see a lot of 200s. Yeah. Uh, 200D. Oh, that one is. Eh, don't touch that. In my article, so I, I, I mean, just now I said it was an E class. It's actually not an E class. One two three was not an E class. It, it, you know, one it's two three is, is the standard car. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's a big car. Yeah. All right. The standard car was 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 that that eventually become an E because the E was in Einsprung ah, Einspr injection uh, injection yeah. which which then in so it, one two four they put it in the front and call it an E class yeah, which because, means it could have been a D class because they also have a D at the end for the diesel cars and they probably sold more diesels than in they than definitely petrol. do sold more diesel because. Yeah. Man, I, uh, random pictures of KL from the 60s and the 70s, Mercedes you will find Benz Mercedes Benz everywhere. So yeah, but but I, I don't find them good looking, uh, to be honest. Uh. You look at you look at very easy. You look at Mercedes prior to World War II and look at Mercedes immediately after World War II. You see a stark difference. Look at Hitler's Mercedes. Bro, that thing is evil, bro. That, that's like oh, authority, man. It's authority. That level of authority they never had yeah. until the shark, the fat whale. Mm, the AMG GT. No, the the one that, that came in the nineties. What was it called? Fat wheel. The S class, the giant S class. One forty. Is it one forty? One forty. Yeah. Rhino, uh, the basically the fat one. The la. mid nineties uh, one with, even, the, with the vacuum doors. Even the S hundred, uh, uh, the the six hundred. Uh, Gross, grosser. Uh, the six hundred grosser. Even that never recaptured the level of the the, the kind of badass that prior to World War Two that that kind of feel they had. No, they never had. After World War Two, they kind of toned down a lot, especially when it comes to the E. The S is still okay. A lot of S classes over the years still good looking, but the E has been always been a little bit awkward. Mm. Okay, I think we better stop it before. Yeah, yeah uh, 500, not 500, 50, 000, 50, 000 50, subscriber. 50,000 subscriber, man. Yeah.
We'll be yeah, back. what should we talk about next? Next, uh, maybe, I actually was reading up on uh, Honda and Toyota. Oh. Did you know that Honda made a US factory before Toyota? Their own US factory. I, I think Honda did a lot of things earlier than Toyota because Toyota is the latest to the game in every single thing they do. Yeah. <laughs> but Honda is tiny, dude, compared to... Correct, the, correct, correct. And uh, not only that, Acura was before Lexus. Was it? Acura was, yeah. was proof that you can sell a luxury Japanese brand. Then, then Toyota said, okay, okay, let the big boy do it. Yeah, yeah, thank correct. you, thank you. And Acura went after E-Class. Oh, wow. L- Lexus went, went after, after S-Class. Because yeah. yeah. Honda doesn't really have that big They don't car. have S-Class. <laughs> 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 to, to go after anyway. Yeah. So we can talk about that. Yeah, Honda versus should. Toyota yeah. versus I, I, Nissan. I, he's, a, he's a Honda boy. He's I am. A, uh, he's a Honda boy all the while. I am never a Honda boy because yeah. I grew up in the 90s. And I see all the Abings like Honda. <laughs> it's the same way as the Malay boys now all like Honda, you realise or not? Yeah. I, the day I was in a wedding here, it's a Malay wedding, wow, everyone was in a Accord, Civic, City, you name it lah. Uh, jazz, was it Jazz without an S? Yeah. The Hondas is disproportionately represented, CRV, everything. Yeah. They love it. Honda is, I mean, back then lah, it was about risk taking. They are engineering first, not marketing first, not... not the, the 90s, uh, you're talking about the 90s. I think, yeah. Up, even before. Even up to now. Even even before the 90s. Uh, even, dude, the entire history was all about risk taking. Oh, was it? Yeah. Their first car, everybody was, everybody's first car in Japan was a truck. Even Toyota, even Mazda. Everybody made a pickup truck first. Yeah. Honda made a sports car first. 600, <laughs> like, the 500. Uh, no, before that. Before the S500. There was a S3 something, 300. Oh, wow. Complete failure. Complete failure, lah. Because they didn't know what they're doing. They just brought it to my. Uh, let's, do this, let's do this in the, in the podcast. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, you go. Right, I'll see you guys. <laughs>